it. It's up, children. And come on, it's Puppet Jelly Bean. I am back. I'm back with another settlement. But before you start rolling your eyes and going, oh, Jesus, Murphy, another settlement. What the heck? Let me explain. Okay, so you've just left Vault 111. You've been frozen for 200 years. Now, do you want to go to Sanctuary and then have to get rid of all the crap, all the old buildings and everything? Or even go to Red Rocket and start getting rid of the scrap and rebuilding everything. So what I've done is if you notice in my little compass down there, there's a little settlement system right there. So what am I talking about? I am talking about the quantum settlement. You've left Vault 111. You don't want to start a new playthrough, a new build. You want something that's ready to go. As soon as you leave Vault 111, you want somewhere to go, set up a beacon, set up a settlement, and everything's ready to go. So just follow that little symbol there, and then you're going to come across this little bunker. So there's Vault 111, and here's where the bunker is. Quick, easy. So this is going to get you started. So let's get inside and see what kind of a mess I made. So here we are. We're inside. I didn't do a cave entry this way. I kind of did like a little walkway. So when, there's the entranceway right there. Now, there was a gentleman called Driving Hands. He talks to me quite a bit and gives me a lot of ideals and everything. I, want, I did this once before and I used these door frames. As you can see these door frames here, because I really like them. But what I was doing was I used regular doors and I found that there, well, he also pointed out and I saw it for myself, there was clipping. So when the door opened, it kind of clipped and you had this big gap. So what he suggested was maybe Vault-Tec sliding doors and all that. Well, the Vault, uh, not Vault-Tec, I'm sorry, Institute, well, I don't really want to, Institute doors really didn't suit. So these, I found these doors were absolutely perfect. They're sliding doors, and what they do is they prevent that clipping. So I'm able to use those beautiful door frames without having all that damn clipping. So like I said, it's just an ordinary entryway. You can probably put some stuff in here, and, you know. This one thing I try and do is I try and make my settlements so that what I've added is scrappable and the player can actually if he wants to change something they can change something you know get rid of this and get rid of that so what we have here in the main entrance we'll have the laundry mat an arcade a couple of bathrooms and security now security only handles the people coming in and out of the settlement they do not handle the actual law enforcement of the settlement what I've done is I put in a police station again, and they will up force, enforce the laws and any other fun stuff that the police have to do. So it's just a relatively simple security office. A couple cameras up there on the wall. Now these desks here, you can assign settlers to this desk. So that just adds a little bit of activity where you can have some settlers actually sitting here and doing stuff. Now, what I've done upstairs is just basically put in some like little supplies and that, a little map. You know, nothing really fancy. Now, with this being near Vault 111, I figured it's very important have the bathrooms by the door, because let's face it, you've been frozen for 200 years. You haven't ate, you haven't, well, you probably slept because you're frozen, but you haven't been able to go to the bathroom. What's the first thing you're going to want to do? You know, you got 200 years of urine built up. You're going to want to try and get rid of that urine somehow. So you can come in here. And here's some bathrooms for you. you come in here and get rid of 200 years worth of urine. <laughs> Then, of course, you may have some dirty clothes or you found some clothes and they're kind of grungy, you know, 200-year-old vault suits. You're going to want to wash them. You're not going to want to sit there and wear 200 years worth of grind. So here's a nice little laundry mat. Come in here, clean up your clothes, get all nice spick and span. 
put the jukebox on and listen to a little bit of music. But then again, if you don't want to sit here and wait for your clothes and all that, just uh, pop on over across the hall to the new cocade. Come on in here. Come over here, grab some tokens, and then just play a few little games. There's always clipping. You always got that clipping. You always got to fix clipping. Clipping, clip, clipping, clipping, clipping. Now you come down here. Now what I've done is I do put pools in uh, all my settlements, as you know. What I've done this time is I've left the pool undecorated. You know, I figure, well, I'll leave it undecorated. Let the player put in what they want. You know, some nice lounge chairs, or maybe you got a mod with this beautiful patio furniture and all that, and you want to be able to use it. So I have left the pool area completely empty, and we'll get to it in a minute. And then, of course, over here, what I've done over here is your crafting area again. There's your radio beacon, your water purifier, little crafting stations. There's no workbench right now because I haven't started building it as a, like, I haven't done the stuff to make it a settlement. Now here's those door frames that I was talking about. What would happen was you would open the door and it would clip into those. So thanks to Driving Hands for his suggestion about uh, the sliding doors, they're working out perfectly. I'm able to use these door frames without any clipping, any snagging, or anything. Makes me very, very happy. Now, over here, we have the pool area. Got some waterfalls at the back, a little sprinkling in the center. And like I said, it is completely empty. So the player can come in here if they have a mod that they really like the furniture. And they can decorate it up using their preferred mods of choice. Instead of having me dictate what's got to be there. But what I do is I always make things scrappable. So that if there's something in the settlement that I put, you don't like it and you want to get rid of it, you're able to scrap it. Just say, ooh, that's ugly. It's ugly, ugly, ugly. And then you get rid of it. Of course, here we have your greenhouse. Now, in a my previous mod, I did it upstairs, and, oh, there I go, hitting that darn cue again. So what I've done is I've done the upstairs again, where they're working up here, and then they want to take a break. They can come over here, grab a new Coca-Cola, sit at these picnic tables. Now, I use different picnic tables this time just to kind of fit in. And of course, if you got to go to the bathroom, I have provided bathrooms up here, male, female bathroom. But I really like these high ceilings. Just like I said, with these walls being high ceilings, it gives you that opportunity that if you want to, you can make a second story. So that is the basement area and the first floor. We're going to head up to the second floor in here. Now there is only, well, technically four floors if you count the basement. Now what I have done with the vendors is again, I put in these vendors. I keep thinking that damn thing is floating, is it? floating let me see yeah it's floating but down here you have the story area now what I have done different is for the vendors I have provided them their own residence so over here they have a little office area they got a desk where they can work on the records and everything a little uh, safe so they can store stuff in their safe Ooh, look at that they got their own little washroom, little sleeping area, sitting area. So they have their own residence. So they don't have to, you know, have a separate residence. They're here. And it actually helps provide security for the store because they're actually living right in the store. So there's always someone here 24 seven. And 
And of course, I used the parlor. And there's Crappy's Cafe, of course, they're all back. And of course, I put the slot machines in. Now, the slot machines actually help produce happiness for the settlement. And that's what we all kind of try and get to, is to try and get that 100% happiness. I think that's the main goal of all settlements, is trying to get that 100% happiness. And I've done the second floor again because I really loved how it turned out the last time. So, of course, you have all your seating. And of course, here's Crappy's Cafe. Again, I've done the second floor. Of course, I had to put these in because everybody loves trying to get that perfectly preserved pie. A couple of espresso machines, some seats here. Oh yes, I also put in some slot machines again. Because like I said, the slot machines help prevent, uh, produce happiness. Now, of course, I really didn't do a lot here. Just a couple lion statues and some, some. So you're, there are a lot of things that you can change. Really kind of give it your personality. You know, with posters and everything. And again, we have the hospital. Display cases where you can put some stuff in there. So your bathrooms. Vending machines over here. And we got the wards this time. And I used the Institute hospital beds this time. Oh, look at that. Some stuff sticking through the roof. Ha <laughs> ha! There's always something you got to fix. Fix this, fix that. Gee, Murphy. All about fixing the settlement. <laughs> so as you can see, I put everything, the police station, the hospital, the bar, the cafe, and everything, everything is on one floor this time. It still ended up being a very large settlement, but me, I can't, I can't make small settlements. I I've tried to make small settlements and I just can't do it. Of course, here we have your offices for the senior police staff. And you got your little secretary area here. Of course, we got the records room. Now, what I've done a little different with the records room is I put in these lovely little terminals. I'm not sure what they do. I've never really tried. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, I didn't know that. Of course, got the bathrooms again. And then if we come over here, we have the jail area. Oh, I keep getting stuck on stuff. Now we're going to head up to the final floor. That's the residential area. Now what I've done with the residential area is I opened up the second floor and kind of put these little balconies in. I'm still going to put some mailboxes in and a little bit more. This is the only area that I haven't nab meshed, and I'm telling you, I hate nab meshing. Oh my God, nab meshing is a pain. But 
you're going to do settlements, you got to have a mesh. The NPCs have to know where to go. So I solved my kitchen problem. So here we have downstairs, fully decorated, ready to go. So rather than leaving it empty like I did before, it is fully decorated and ready to go. Nice little sitting area here, grab a nice little book. Of course you got your bathroom and your little sitting area. Kind of come out here and look on the balcony. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Quantum Settlement. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. The algorithm will love you. I'll love you. Everyone will love you. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Move your mouse a little to the right. Hit that bell icon so you'll be notified each and every time I upload a video. And always remember, wherever the journey takes you, may the road rise up to greet you. I'm Jellybean, and thank you so very much for watching.